Hi everyone, I'm Will Brown and welcome to the WP Quickies series, bite-sized WordPress tips and tricks in 30 minutes and less. So this lunchtime, I'm going to be talking about some methods to help clean up your WordPress media library. So thanks for your time and joining me in this uh, Sydney lockdown afternoon. Uh, welcome to those overseas and those watching on the replay as well. Do drop your name and where you're from in the comments below and I'll, I'll say hi to you. And while you're on YouTube or Facebook, just hit those buttons, subscribe, ding, and give us some likes as well, and that'd be great. Let's see who we've got in here today. We've got Cass and Co um, on Addison. We've got On Top as well. Uh, we have uh, Susan. Hi, Susan. And Jean as well from Lizaro in New South Wales. Alan is from Annadale. Welcome, guys. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. I'm guessing everyone here in Sydney is in lockdown already. We've got Paul from the Sydney's Northern Beaches. Uh, Cameron says hello from Victoria Harbour. Hi, Cameron. How you doing? And uh, <clears throat> we've got on top from Sydney as well. Uh, Cass and Co is in Shell Harbour. Lovely. I'd love to live in a harbour. It'd be great to be on the coast, I think, so far away from the coast um, here in the inner west, unfortunately. Okay, guys, thank you very much uh, for dropping your name and where you're from. Uh, so uh, if you want to ask a question uh, during this, uh, we have uh, just drop them in the comments. Uh, use a hashtag ask or just put them in the comments anyway. I'm kind of over this hashtag ask, to be, to be honest. Uh, who else we got? Janie Barron from Lockdown in Sutherland Shire. Yeah, all the shires are locked down as well. Misty Mayapus, hello, and Future Shock in Marrickville as well. So I used to live in Dulwich Hill. I'm just around the corner from Markville, so I know exactly where you are, Future Shock. And Liz says hi from the Central Coast. Thank you very much, guys, for dropping in. So today, I'm going to be a bit quick because it's my five-year-old's, uh, sorry, my six-year-old's birthday today, six today. Um, so he's doing a little bit of homeschool uh, downstairs at the moment with mum. Um, so I'm going to try and finish that up uh, really, really quickly today so we can do some birthday stuff. That'd be awesome. So today, we're going to get stuck into uh, the W. Uh, WP Media Library and just some tips on how to clean that up because you know it does get in a bit of a mess after a while. <clears throat> so um, it's really easy for your WordPress media library to become super full of unused files um, and that can slow down your WordPress website and make the overall management really, really difficult. Um, so by cleaning it up regularly and optimizing your images appropriately, um, they can be sure that your website and its media contents are going to be operating at their best for the future. So we're going to see some tips and tricks to try and get your WordPress media library sorted, your file sorted, kind of going forward. Um, and then some tips as well as actually how to clean out all that extra stuff that guff so we've got joey j from singapore as usual <clears throat> uh, Janie barnes is happy birthday my boy yeah he's, he's pretty excited today and uh, kingsley forrest smith is from sunny newport thank you so much guys for dropping in so any links throughout these i'll drop them in the comments below after uh, after the broadcast is happened so don't have to you have to uh, write anything down just have a look uh, maybe about 10 15 minutes after the broadcast and all those links will be there in the comments for you Okay, I've got a bit of a croaky voice today. <clears throat> you have to excuse me. Okay, so why should you clean up your WordPress media library? Well, I really kind of kind of said it really, but um, let's just go through some of the things that WordPress does. So by default, when you upload a file to the media library, WordPress, WordPress makes another three copies. So it makes a thumbnail, it makes a medium size and a large size image, and it keeps the original one as well. So an extra three images for every image that you add to the media library. And now some new WordPress users, they might not realize that, but certainly if you've been using WordPress and you've not bothered about that for years and years, um, and then can you imagine the amount of images that you upload times that by by three or four, you know, and you've got a huge media library there. And that's not all. Um, other themes and other plugins, they might also add to this copy list. They might add their own different image sizes um, for whatever theme or whatever plugin that they need. And um, so maybe you've got um, maybe six, maybe you've got seven different file copies for each time you upload just one image that the WordPress and these themes and plugins is going to create all these different types of sizes of image um, based on the one that you load and before you know it, your media is littered with multiple copies and sizes of the same image some you may not even be aware of and some you might not even need to use 
So this is going to add to your overall disk space. And if you've got a small web hosting plan, which I know a lot of you do when you start off um, for the first time with uh, WordPress, that could be the reason, it could be ending up to be the reason you need to upgrade to the next plan because you end up with you know, all these gigabytes of, of files stored in your media library. And also, the more files that you have on your WordPress website, the bigger your backup file is going to be and the longer it's going to take to make backups and hence restore it as well. And that's really critical because if you've had a website that's been running for several years and you've got hundreds, thousands of images, copies of images, it's going to take a long time to back that up. And if your website goes down, it's going to take equally as long to unzip and restore all those files back into the library. So keeping your media library nice and fresh and up to date and clean is vital for backups for those. Okay, next. So here's some tips on how to keep things nice and tidy. So the best way to save space on your WordPress website is to resize your images. Now, I haven't come across a single client yet that didn't have a 10 or 20 megabyte image files added to their um, their media library at crazy resolutions like 5,000 pixels by whatever, you know, uploaded straight from their iPhone, whatever it is, you know, with the highest resolution uh, straight into WordPress. I've come across that multiple, multiple, multiple times. Um, and, uh, you know, so they've uploaded these huge files into their WordPress media file only to be used as like a blog thumbnail or a blog header image that might be a thousand pixels wide and not 5,000. Now, <clears throat> Uh, know the sizes uh, of your images that you want to use in your website. So you really need to know what sizes. So have a look at your theme and have a look at all the different um, templates that your theme uses. Your front page, your blog archive, which is your list of posts, and um, your tag and category archive, your single post as well. So is it using just a small image at the top? Is there no image? Um, or is it using like a big header image? and have a look at those categories, those archives, and see the size of the image that it's using um, for your desktop and for your tablet and for your mobile. And just write down those image sizes that your theme is using. So know the sizes um, of images that you need for your website theme. Um, and for those big website, for those big images that you have, you can resize them down, and that's gonna save you a huge, huge amount of space. So not only is this gonna reduce space on your web server, it's also gonna reduce your backup size as well. Um, and also it's gonna help uh, increase the speed of your website because your web server's not going to serve as much stuff and that should reflect better in your SEO as well. So the top tip, um, and I do this all the time when I'm doing website audits, is uh, to resize all those images down to just what is needed for your theme. Now, you can use a plugin uh, and there's a plugin called IM Sanity, and that's the banner in it. So it's I M Sanity um, to reduce the file sizes of your plugins. Now, I find that running plugins like this on a server slows down your website performance, especially if you've been using WordPress for ages. You maybe got three, maybe five, maybe even seven years worth of images there. So, what I usually do is so you, I recommend that people look at these um, plugins and try and use them if if they're new um, or, you know, if they don't have the skills to do what I'm going to describe next. But what I tend to do is I tend to uh, go into the C panel or the Plesk, that's the web hosting panel. I usually go to the WP content slash uploads and that's where WordPress by default, unless you've changed it, stores all the media files. And I zip up that whole thing into one big zip file, download it onto my local PC and my local machine, unzip it, and then I use custom software to swap, like free open source software um, to resize all those images in batch mode. Um, and uh, do some compression as well. Zip that all up and then upload that back into the web server and replace all those files that are, are there for those. So that's the quickest way that I, I can do it because you know, I've got all these software that, that runs batch mode. So I can just uh, you know set it to recursively, go through all the directories, and maybe scale everything to 1280 by 720, you know, if they're greater than that. Uh, and that's going to squash all those down. And um, I can choose to replace the image, which is probably what you should do 
Um, because if you make a new copy, the WordPress media library probably isn't going to recognize what it is. So if you are resizing these images in a batch mode, make sure that it renames into the exact same file name as well. And um, also before you do this, make sure that you do have a backup of your entire WordPress website. Because if anything goes wrong, if some of these plugins start to delete something or something goes a bit wonky, you don't really want to lose that original image because you know you might need to restore it you know, and work on it again, you know, if something happens. So make sure you got a backup first. Um, but that's basically my process. I I, up, I zip up the stuff on the web server in the wp-contents-uploads, bring it down to my local PC, run some software, run some apps on it that uh, resizes everything that's really big down to a good size. And, and I also run compression tools as well. But we'll talk about those just in a little bit as well. So in order to, in order to do that, you're going to need um, an FTP um, access to your web hosting, or you can use something called File Manager. And file Manager is available on most of the web hosting control panels like cPanel and Place. So you can do that. You can zip stuff up and upload and download files and uncompress um, archives as well. So that's my tip for, um, for resizing images. Get rid of those huge, huge images and resize them down to something that only your theme needs for that. Okay, another tip is to use uh, JPEGs instead of PNGs, um, or better still, WebP. Now, uh, PNG, the PNG format, it's a, what's called a lossless format, meaning there's well, there's not a lot of compression there. And basically, each pixel in the, the image is represented by a file byte, more or less. Um, so that means that the PNG files can be quite large in size. Now, usually they're very, very good. And sometimes people um, use PNGs, you know, if you've got a lot of graphics, um, in, a, in a particular uh, image, you've got a lot of detail because it's very, very crisp to see. Um, but that does re result in a really large file. So really, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I tend to advise my clients, the only real reason you should be using a PNG um, on your website is if you need a transparent background because uh, JPEGs don't support transparency, but PNGs do. Okay, so that's the only reason that you should really be using a PNG is for having transparent images. Now, the JPEG format, it offers a range of compression options. Now, most of them are indistinguishable from the human eye. So that means, you know, you can have the highest quality, which I think is 12. You bring it down to 10, which is like large size. And even if you bring it down to medium, which I think is around about eight or something on, on the scale from that, for most images, I can't see any difference between the 12 and maybe like the eight or the six are going down kind of that way. If you go down a little bit less, you can see a little bit more pixelation, but for the most part, you know, you can save a huge amount of file space just if you move, move the compression down a couple of bits and you're not gonna lose anything uh, visually from the human eye on that. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'd recommend um, that you, uh, if you've got lots of PNGs, that you uh, change them over to JPEGs instead, but you can go one step further. So as of WordPress 5.8, they have added uh, functionality features to be able to add the WebP format directly into the media library. So you don't uh, need any plugins any longer to support WebP. WordPress, as of 5.8, supports that natively. And if you don't know what WebP is, you can have a look in my WP quickies uh, from a few months ago. I've got a whole uh, segment on what WebP is. But uh, just for, for, uh, for brevity here, the WebP format has a better compression than JPEG. So we've got PNG right up here. We've got JPEGs, which is pretty good compression. WebP can save maybe about 20 or 30% of the file size of JPEGs. And it supports transparency. So what that means is you can basically scrap JPEGs, scrap PNGs, and go completely with WebP and save a lot of file space in your media library. Now, um, I would, if I'm changing those um, uh, images on a client's website, I would do the same process as I mentioned before. I would download them to my local machine. I'd run some app software um, that would convert them from whatever format they are to WebP, then upload them. But, you know, if you uh, don't have the skills to do that, there are some plugins to do that for you. Now, um, this one here is called Short Pixel. Uh, it's a free version. Um, the free version converts 100 
images per month. So it runs as a batch mode and it runs through all your media library files and you can convert it to WebP and you can give the compression ratio as well. And it just sits in the background, you know, and it, it finds files and it compresses them and replaces them as well. Um, now, if you've got hundreds of thousands of files and you don't want to do the, the download zip method that I normally use, you can still use short pixel, but you have to buy credits and um, but it's not very expensive i think it's maybe about 10 us dollars to get like uh, 10 000 credits so you know you can really really use this at uh, this and i have used this on client websites as well or at least advise clients to use this one and they've bought that package and they just let it run and maybe over the next few weeks um at the end of a couple of weeks then you know all their uh, images are replaced by webp for those so we've got a couple of questions here. Uh, on top says, is there a plugin that can do an audit of all the images, including size, resolution, and where they are being used? Kind of. Um, I kind of go into that in, in a little bit in a few slides, but that's a good question. Um, and Liz says, um, is safe for web setting in Photoshop the same as WebP? You know, it isn't. <clears throat> um, so if you're using Photoshop, there is, uh, and I'll add a link, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll add a link to this. Um, in the description, there is a GitHub repository. Um, I think it's from Google. Um, don't don't uh, quote me. I think it's from Google. But there's a GitHub repository that contains a WebP extension for Photoshop. So if you add that extension into your Photoshop um, library in the file system, and then reboot Photoshop, uh, then you can be able to do a save as, and WebP will come up as an option for that. So Photoshop doesn't natively su support WebP, so you're going to need that that add-on. Um, for that, for Photoshop, that's a great question, Liz. Uh, Kingsley Forrest Smith asks, I, if I need to use PNG, um, suggest compress or flatten the layers, and that saves heaps too. Um, of course, keep the original to edit. Yep, so you, if you are playing around with these images, make sure you keep the original, don't replace it. Um, so you've got that somewhere, so you can then revise that and go back into it. Don't replace the complete original, um, and that's why it's good to have a backup of the website as well when you're manipulating these um, images. Uh, JNA Barron says he uses short pixel uh, for free to compress individual pics before you upload them to your, to your website. Yeah, so a lot of these plugins um, have heaps of options. So this short pixel one can actually dynamically on the fly um, change things from PNG to WebP uh, as well. Uh, but for this particular slot, we're just focusing on this one where it, um, um, it converts the images to WebP. So yeah, thanks for that, guys. Um, lots of options for those. Okay, so uh, here we have, so if you're, you've are had a look at your theme and you know what sizes are needed, um, you can go and get rid of these extra image sizes if you don't need them in WordPress. So to do that, you need to uh, go to the settings and then the media, and then you'll see this screen here. I'll make it a little bit bigger. So this is by default. This is where uh, WordPress um, has, um, it generates these three extra image sizes when you upload a file to the media library. And um, I can't remember what the sizes used to be. I think the medium size is maybe 300 and the large size is 10, 24. But what you want to do is if you don't need those sizes and make sure that, you know, if you if you do need them, don't do this. But, you know, this is, um, you know, if you wanted to save uh, space, then come in here. Um, you can maybe keep the thumbnail sizes because sometimes the thumbnails are shown in the blog archive. So I've kept them here. And then uh, there's no option to, um, to stop um, these files being created, um, but we can set them to zero, set the max width and max height to zero, which I've done for the medium size and the large size, and then WordPress itself will not generate those images. So if you don't need those sizes, I would recommend you go into your settings and media, set those sizes to zero, and WordPress will no longer generate those extra um, sizes. So if you don't need all three of them, just zap them and you're, sa you're saving yourself a lot of space um, and maybe not in the present but certainly you know maybe one or two years down the line when you end up with hundreds and thousands of different images so a couple more um options here uh question sorry uh right that we've done that one uh to compress uh gina baron use short pixel one from kinsley there we go is webp now covered by all browsers at July, it was 75%. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so if you have a look at my WebP WP quickies, I've got some links in there. There's a couple of websites and um, you can look and it shows you what is supported from, uh, from within the browser. There's a couple of things maybe in the previous Safari um, that isn't completely 100% supported, but all the major browsers um, across the board will support WebP at its very basic uh, level. So yeah, don't be worried about that. 
And Alan asks, the default for short pixel is to save a copy of the original file. And that means we use even more storage unless you change the default untick image backup. So there's a great tip there. Yeah, make sure you go through the settings. So I'm not going into each of the plugins individually today. Um, so yeah, so for the short pixel, Alan's saying that it actually does make a copy by default. So you need to go in there and uh, uncheck that image backup so it replaces the original one. So you definitely don't want to be making any more of those. And Joey J says, enable media replace plugin is very handy as the default WordPress isn't good at replacing images yet. Yeah, pretty sucky. So that's a great recommendation for that. And I'll add all these links into the description afterwards. Okay, so uh, now that your media files are in the right size and in the right format going forward, we need to remove all those existing files, all those unused files that are in here. And that can kind of be tricky to do automatically. So depending on the way that you use images in WordPress, WordPress itself doesn't always keep a one-to-one -one association between the files and whatever WordPress post that you're using it. You know, especially I'm thinking about things like background images, you know, so it doesn't always record that as an attachment to the image. So if you're new to WordPress, there are a couple of ways that you can delete images from the media library, the ones that are unused. So this is for newbies. This is showing you how you go about deleting an image. So this is within the, the media library. And what I've done here is I've opened up a single image and we've got a nice picture of top banana award there. Um, now, if you go down to the very bottom left, right hand corner, sorry, right hand corner, um, you can see the delete permanently. So that's just a single um, image. So if you want to get rid of a single image or file, then open it up and you've got this link to delete it permanently at the bottom down there. It's not very intuitive. So if you just look at the media library itself and you're seeing all this row of pictures, it's not immediately intuitive as to how you actually delete those. The media library in WordPress needs a lot of work. It's kind of not been touched for a long time. So it's probably at the top of uh, the wish list for most users for WordPress is the next thing to overhaul. So, so there we go, that's how to delete a single file from the media library. And you know, this is just a refresher for, for new people. And um, if you're gonna want to delete more images, so if you wanna delete multiple images from your media library, I'll make this a little bit uh, bigger. It's called bulk deletion. So what we do is here, here's the media library and we've got the, the grid of images. So we go and click this button called bulk select. And then what you'll see is you'll have um, a row of images. And if you click on them, um, it places a little check mark in the top right hand corner. So you select the ones, you click on them, the ones that you want to delete permanently. So there's three here with the check boxes, and then you click on the delete permanently button. And that's going to go through all those images and that's going to delete them all. And this is a permanent deletion. So there's no trash can for the media library. So make sure um, that you have a backup of all your stuff and make sure that the ones you've selected are the ones that you really want to delete. So that's just a little refresher on how to delete a single file and how to delete multiple files manually in the WordPress media library. Now, manual deletion is probably the best option to limit the risk um, that needed images might be removed. So um, some of the plugins that do this, um, they, they're just kind of guessing sometimes. Um, and as I said, with WordPress, it's kind of difficult to be 100% sure that an image is not used somewhere. However, if this task seems too time consuming for you, um, here's some plugins that can help automate the process. But remember, there's gonna be risks associated with using automated deletion plugins. So have your backups handy just in case. So the first one is one that I absolutely love and I use this on every website, my own ones and my client uh, websites as well. And uh, this one's called WP Optimize with a Z. So it must be from America. Um, so this is a, this one has many, many, many tools to optimize your WordPress website overall. But today for this um, use case, we're just focusing on um, the image particular one. And within this tool, there is an option of a function to search for orphaned images. Um, so that's images that it's tr gonna try and detect that are not associated with any WordPress post. Um, so if you click through this, it take a little bit of time, depending on how many um, images you've got in your media library, but it's gonna try to attempt to locate the media library images that are not associated with any post within your WordPress website. And um, it's gonna flag them up with an option, uh, it's gonna highlight them, and um, so you can go through and select which ones um, you know are not being used, and then you can delete those. Um, and you know it's going to apparently delete those. Or you know if you know that one is coming up in the list that you know you've, you've using somewhere, or you might be a bit suspicious that it's being used, you can uncheck that 
and then you can go and check later on manually. But this is going to save a lot of time if you're looking to, if you've got like hundreds and thousands of files already in your media library, or certainly if you've used one of the um, one of the plugins to convert, so you know you've got a whole bunch of JPEGs, you've got a whole bunch of PNGs, and now you've converted over to WebP, and you want to just delete them all. This is uh, one of the one of the great tools for that. And another tool as well, and this one is called a WPS Cleaner um, by a WP Server. Um, I think that's web management. Um, so it, inclu it includes a very good media library related cleanup functions. Um, and this one here, um, who was asking before, I think it was on top, was asking about, um, can you do an audit of all the images, including sizes and resolution and stuff? This is probably your best bet um, for that one, um, Dewey. Um, we've uh, this one here, um, so it goes through Media Library and it goes through your WordPress and you can actually see a list of all the files, including the size of the files. I think it does display resolution, but it also displays the kind of overall total size as well. Um, and you can break that down overall for everything um, or in the particular uploads folders as well. So if you've got like 2020 or 2019, it'll tell you like the, the file size within those particular folders. So you can maybe focus on the ones with like the, the largest size first and, and grab some more of those. So this is probably your best bet um, for that one. And it's very good, but it does take a lot of time, especially if you've got a lot of images in your um, uploads folder. And so again, this one tries to identify unused media files, files and it provides a little interface that uh, shows you um, what it's found and you can check and uncheck um, files individually um, that, uh, that you're maybe not sure about. And then just once you're comfortable, press the button and it'll go through and delete all those files permanently. Again, make sure that you've got a backup ready. So the last one today is called Media Cleaner, um, and this has a single focus. This is all it does. Um, so I do love plugins that have, you know, just do one thing, do one thing really, really well. So this one here, Media Cleaner, um, I love the little graphic here. I love the, the bin, the frog bin, the recycle bin, um, and the WordPress cat throwing stuff in there. I <laughs> think that's a, a great uh, banner. Um, so this one, once installed, uh, the tool will add um, um, all the files that are being used in your website. Um, such as in posts, pages, and galleries, to a temporary trash bin. You can then review the files and choose which ones you want to permanently remove. So very similar to the previous one, um, but this focuses more on just like the, the media files itself and not maybe like posts. So it's got more focus on the media library um, and what's in there rather than maybe just stuff that's already in, in the file system as well. So have a look at those plugins, um, install them maybe on like a staging server, if you've got like a, a copy server for that, uh, do like a run and see see exactly what it does. Um, but I think those three plugins there will really help you clean up your media library if you've been using WordPress for many, many years and you've built up hundreds of thousands of files like, like um, a lot of us have. Uh, let's see one. Uh, here we've got some Susan saying, wouldn't it be great if WordPress would label which images are being used? Um, yes, it would. It would, Susan. I completely agree with you. The media library hasn't really been touched since, well, well since I started using um, WordPress in 2008. It's kind of pretty much exactly the same as it was, you know, in version like three or whatever it was. Yeah, they've added a few little buttons and things, but this this actual concept of what the media library is um, is exactly the same. And there are lots of plugins that you can do to extend um, the media library. And um, so there's like you can uh, manage file systems and that. But again, it'd be nice if it was built into the core. So yeah, I agree with you, Susan. And um, there's a lot that can be done to enhance the media library. And I really wish they put that. that at the top of the list rather than doing all these uh, blockify type stuff. So that's it for today. Um, those are kind of my tips for cleaning up your WordPress media library files, um, getting it in ship shape order for the future and dealing with all those uh, unused files as well, trying to identify them and zap them so you're saving space um, on your web server space and resources. And I really would recommend that, um, you know, if you're a bit unsure about WebP, um, have a look through the WP Quickies list on YouTube and uh, find my, w my WebP version and just watch that one. It's, it's only about 30 minutes long and it gives a good introduction as to what WebP is and um, you know, what the format is and some of the plugins and things that you can do and all the standards and browsers and things that it supports as well. Another question is, is there a good media library manager tool? So yeah, there is. Um, um, I'll, I might do a quickie on this. 
So it's not particularly um, for this topic here, but there are lots of uh, tools and extensions that will help you manage your WordPress media library a little bit more efficiently. As I said, right, with with, uh, with Susan's comment, it would be great if it was all built into core, um, but it's not been touched for a while. So you will see that there's lots and lots of um, extensions and plugins that will help you manage uh, your media library. I don't have them on the top of my head, so I can't give you any, any examples, unfortunately, just off the top of my head. Uh, but that's it for today. I can't see any more questions coming through on the iPad. Um, so while I'm waiting for those, or if there's none there, then I'll just do a little bit of a wrap up today. Um, so yep, I'm always looking for lunchtime quickies topics. You might have known, you might have noticed that I've scheduled quite a few, <laughs> um, but I'm always looking for extra topics that I can maybe do another time. So I have scheduled all the way through to, I think, uh, December the 2nd. And I think that might be the last one I might do. Um, so uh, yeah, but uh, still looking for topics and ideas that I can cover outside that. Just a quick shout out for WPAustralia.org. So if you're looking to find uh, meetups uh, around Australia, the ones that are meet up in person or online um, uh, just now, um, click on the find meetup button on there. And you can also, there's a button there to join us on Slack. And if you don't know what Slack is, it's basically an online community. That's where um, a lot of the, the, the WP Australia community hangs out um, now that we can't meet up in person. So there's lots of different uh, channels in there. There's channels for plugins, for themes, for code support, for business tips, uh, pretty much anything you could um, you could uh, think of. Um, there's specific channels. So you know, if, if you've got some questions about WordPress, um, you don't know who to talk to, join Slack. Um, drop into the general channel, say hi, get to know us, and uh, get to know who we are, and uh, feel free to ask questions as well. There's a lot of experts in there in very different uh, fields of follows, and they'll show you um, what the answer is, or they'll, they'll basically uh, point you in the right direction. A little bit of a shout out for, for my um, website owner survival guide. You can visit the website and have a look at that if that's relevant to you. And happy to connect with you. I'm mostly on LinkedIn. Um, these days, I'll go, I do have some stuff on Instagram as well, um, and you can probably see most of my rants on Twitter as well, but mostly on LinkedIn at the moment. Uh, so thank you very much um, for those. Uh, brilliant. Again, love these sessions. Enjoy the party. I don't know how much of a party it's going to be. We've got a Zoom call with some of his friends at uh, 4 p.m., so hopefully that'll be great because we, this is actually the second year that my little boy hasn't been able to have a birthday party because of COVID. Grr. So yeah, so we're going to have some time spent on Zoom with some of his friends, and that'll be a great uh, great time. So thank you very much, guys. Um, I'm not too sure what, what is happening next week because I haven't updated the graphic, but you'll be able to have a look at meetup.com and see what's happening next week uh, for that. So take care, guys. Stay safe. Um, wear your masks. Uh, stay at home if that's re relevant. And, you know, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.